Hi, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. John Baker here from RotagRepair.ca. What do we have here today? Look at this. A pair, a nice match pair of 185 Rotax engines uh, from LA's Air. The uh, aircraft has been sitting idle for about 10 years. Uh, it's getting a restoration. So uh, what I'm going to do is completely dismantle both of these engines see what condition they're in and make any necessary repairs to put them back into service and of course I'll be overhauling the carburetors at the same time uh, and uh, doing the run-in procedure here at the shop so when the uh, owner gets these back he can just put one on each wing and fire them up and away he goes so stay tuned and we'll see how they are so as you can see it's on my teardown bench first thing that's going to happen is the propeller is going to come off or the propellers it's two blade uh, and then i can inspect them and put them aside for safe storage uh, then i'm free to move the engine around and i don't have to worry about damaging the propellers at all the propeller has been removed everything is labeled which is what we should be doing all the time uh, this is labeled 1a so this one goes in there because that piece and that piece are almost identical. Would it make any difference? I don't want to find out. It was, uh, I want to return it the way that I got it. Uh, if it was balanced before, it'll still be balanced when I'm finished with it. And the propellers, uh, the same way uh, I labeled those. Uh, this is for number one engine in the front position and the rear position. So just to make sure everything goes back where it came from. It only takes a minute, tape and a, and a magic marker, cheap insurance. Well, as you can see, I uh, got the muffler off. It's corrosion wise, yes, it has some surface corrosion, but structurally it looks, uh, it looks very good. Reasonably clean inside. Um, I did use a uh, flashlight and uh, look inside because I was curious and uh, looking in the exhaust port and didn't see any rust in there so that's a good sign so uh, and then next step is I've uh, used my special puller for damage free removal warmed this up a little bit and got the flange or the hub um, for the propeller uh, removed from the crankshaft it's keyed on there so that it doesn't turn and it has a bit of a taper to it of course so uh, once it's tight, it's not gonna go anywhere. So, and again, I labeled that uh, so that it all matches the spinner, everything all matches. So it all goes back the same way it came off. So let's carry on. So this is the bracket that holds the throttle cable on. So we've all got cameras and f or phones with cameras. Take a picture of these things before you take them apart so you have a reference. And the reason that's extremely important in this case is, move that out of the way, there's a spacer in here, this little tag of aluminum, that is in there for a very specific reason, because the height, okay, the height of this is taller than this, and so that this ear doesn't get broken off, they've put this spacer in here, so that it's all the same height. So just a thought, I take a lot of pictures. I don't take many notes, but I take a ton of pictures. And this is the reason why. So I have a reference and I can go backwards and see how it came apart and how it's supposed to fit together. So I studied the engine mount and I went, okay, how should I get this off? I'm trying to do it in the most efficient way. So I could have took all these bolts out and turned it into a million little pieces, but I didn't see much point in doing that. So I realized that these, there's four bolts here, or studs, with nuts on the top, um, two on the other side, of course, that holds this whole thing on the engine. And the recoil starter it holds on as well. So I've marked this so that the recoil starter goes on in the right orientation. I want the rope to end up coming out the right where it was before when I put it back together. And so I labeled it, this is engine number one, intake side, and the same, okay? So now, and I've disconnected the uh, throttle cable that's laying on the other side. So now, there we go. All in one piece. And, and yes, I'll inspect all the mounts and the rubbers on it, but like I said, why take it in a million pieces? So the, the, the thought here, the takeaway here is, have a look at these things first before you try and take it apart. And 
maybe you can find a very simple way to get it apart and then put it back together. So now I have access to remove the ignition and I thought, well, let's see what it's like when I turn the engine, rotate it, and it rotates just fine. However, you hear this noise? Right in here is a compression release to make it easier to start. Uh, it's not being applied right now, which means it's stuck open. Now, as you can see, the carburetor is off. It was a bit time consuming because both of the nuts can only do them one flat at a time. So that was a bit of a time consuming project, but it's off damage free and that's what I want. Now, next thing is, speaking of damage, now that this is more exposed, here's our compression release right here. Don't want it to be damaged at all. Um, now to take it off, so here's my regular professional series socket and it's uh, 11 millimeters. And of course this button won't allow it to fit or the socket won't allow the button to fit inside. So you can see inside there, uh, just use a screwdriver here. So that's how deep it is. And the idea behind that is if I put a nut in here, I don't want the nut, the nut to fall all the way to the bottom of the socket. So this is why um, the, these are made this way. Now what I really need is what I call the lower end or the cheaper sockets where they don't have that feature. So if I was to put a nut in this one, it'll just fall all the way to the bottom. So rather frustrating tool to work with, but glad that this was kicking around um, in the unused tool socket. So uh, what does this mean? This means that I can go, there's the bottom right there. So <laughs> substantially more than that one. So now I can know that it'll slide over the button and it should go all the way down. Yes, it does. And and get onto the hex at the bottom. And now we'll be able to take this out easily. So there we are. Compression release is out. I'll set this aside. We'll restore this after. And uh, it, hopefully it's just dirty and gross and has carbon in it. And that's why it's leaking. We'll see. I'm going to remove the... Um, ignition plate as an assembly and since this engine I'm sure ran before if I put it back exactly where it is now I should be extremely close or maybe even right on um, the proper timing so instead of just pulling it off randomly let's make a little witness mark which is uh, going to do right here now where I'm going to do this there's a flat spot right here and part of the boss on the outside. It won't make any damage to anything. And I'm just gonna take a sharp little chisel here and I'm going to make a witness mark. Now when you do this, hold down the chisel and don't let it bounce around. You don't have to kill it. Just a bunch of little tappy tappies and I'm sure you can see the little witness mark on there now. Whoops, right there. So very easy to do. So when I put this back together, I'm going to line that up. So now the plate is free to come off, except it still has some other things holding it on. The spark plug wire passes through the case right here. There's another wire right here that is actually the P lead or the ground lead to turn it off, or the ignition off. Then over on the other side, you can see the red here on the outside of the case. This is the one that would put out uh, power from this lighting coil here. So um, I'm going to have to. Uh, flip this back out of the way it has a little um, like a shrink tube over top of it to keep it insulated and I'm expecting this to be soldered on so let's see what I can do to get this off I may cut it but I don't want to there we go so it slid back so you can see there's a ball of solder on that so I'll have to uh, heat that up and detach the wire this one will be the same and 
once those are free, then we'll unscrew the cap, the spark plug cap, and set it aside to inspect it later. And uh, then I'll be able to take this right out. Well, that was most difficult to get that wire the uh, out of that little hole right there it goes through because somebody tied like a left-handed snowball hitch on the thing through the hole it was never going to get away and then soldered it like no tomorrow anyway i won i got it off had the ignition removed we just go to the outside for a second and this is where the spark plug wire passes through this is the p lead or the ground lead so if you take in contact from there to the engine block the engine will stop and turn it off and then the one that you could see was red from the inside is right here and that's the one that's hooked up the charge coil so um, I'm not sure uh, I don't remember I'd have to look and see uh, how much power that charge coil has but it would run something anyway now carrying on here what do we see before I go to take this all apart is this is pretty rough where the points run, so I'm not sure how that's going to turn it when it's clean. Uh, it's got some wear on it. It has a lot of corrosion on it. And look at the corrosion right down here where the crankshaft meets the seal. That could be an issue. We'll find it when we get it further apart. And, of course, we're dealing with the same thing um, on the, uh, the PTO side. Is uh, the Corrosion here uh, is outside, but right underneath the seal here the lip of the seal is going to be corroded in there so we'll see what happens so here's the big reveal let's lift the head off and see what's in there well it doesn't look terrible as far as carbon in the head goes It has a fair amount on the top of the piston dome, but nothing terribly unusual. And it looks like, yes, without a doubt, I would say the head gasket was on its way out. You see the color all around here. Then we have a change over here where it's dark. That's from, com from combustion gas going there. So this was about to blow out its head gasket. Well, we'll carry on. So let's get the cylinder off. I've tried already to slide it up. It won't move. So I'm going to tap you a little bit. I'm using a dead blow hammer because I don't want to mark anything. Give it a little tappy taps. And the gasket at the bottom now has broken free. So I should be able to, there we go, slide this off. And then we'll see what we can see. Oh look, a piston. Okay, we'll put the cylinder aside. I'll measure it up, clean it up after, and just carry on. Actually, uh, no kidding aside, the piston looks pretty good. So here's a uh, tip for when you dismantle things, anything, doesn't have to be uh, an engine. Uh, these, these bolts all look the same. These screws all look the same, the heads on them, but are the lengths all the same? Yeah, no, they're not. So I removed these and laid them where they came out of. And then once they were all out, then I measured the length of them all. So this one is 42 millimeters, 42. This one's 50 and 42 and 50 over here. So the important takeaway is that when you take something apart, keep everything in order, and then you'll know to get the right length bolts back in the right hole. Very important. Uh, so I'm gonna take a photographic, uh, so I'll have a photographic record of where the dimensions are for when I put it back together, because of course this will be all washed off and clean. As you can see, the crankshaft is out. Uh, you have to apply heat to both halves of the crankcase to separate it. I can still feel the heat coming off of that. Um, the seals, uh, crankshaft seals, are both hard as rock. Um, there's a lot of um, corrosion has gone down through the seal area here. Uh, the same on the mag, 
uh, side of the crankshaft. But regardless of all that, now it's cleanup time. Let's assess what we have and um, find out whatever things that we're going to need. 